Yeah, it's. I mean, I think we, we we like to say we saw it coming in that we we heard him you know, probably in February maybe that we we were taking it quite seriously. We um, a lot of our business is corporate um, events, especially you know heading as you get later into the year and you head in towards Christmas. But you have big sort of global events meeting in London, and we'll of, often host the um, the after parties. It were let's say a big a big gas thing or a big oil thing or something like that. And bookings were starting to cancel. And that's where we our, our sort of everyday business wasn't affected by it in terms of Londoners and, and local tourists. But we were seeing big event changes. So, and, and then it just, the, the day Boris announced it, we shut the office, bookings just cascading. All of our revenue was taken in venue. Um, we didn't have an online business as such, other than maybe you know, gift vouchers and stuff like that. But we didn't, we didn't have retail, we didn't have home experiences, uh, subscription models, we didn't have any of that. So it, it did hit us very hard. Um, and it's been, it's just been, it's been six months, but it feels probably more like three years, I'd say. Um, yep. And we've just been rolling with the punches, I think we're very resilient in hospitality, but as a company, what else can you do other than just roll up your sleeves and take it as it comes? So mm-hmm. I'd say we, I, I, I personally feel a bit numb by it all. And you start to actually lose a bit of feeling in terms of some of the decisions you're making, things like that. That's when, that's the worrying sign, but we're very optimistic. When we reopened sales were, were beyond expectation. Demand is there mm-hmm. and we're seeing opportunities as well. So you guys basically diversified uh, your, your, your business model. You talked about subscription and, and home experience. Can you tell me about, about that? Yeah, the, the, I, th- I think, I mean, one, you have to look for the positives in, in this if you possibly can. And ideas that we've had and spoken about for years have now happened within weeks and a month. So actually the pressure of um, not having agent, we don't retain the agencies at the moment. We don't have any budgets. We don't have any of this. So suddenly, if you want to do stuff, the option is you do it yourself or you get your hands dirty. And, and I re- that's something I'm really enjoying. Um, but yeah, what, what did we do? We started to do these at-home cocktail experience kits. So one of our big, our big mission statements is that you can't recreate what we do at home or you can't recreate in anybody else's bars. So rather than just send out a cocktail box we're sending you out, um, you know, a, a box that the cocktail is, is properly branded. Uh, you'll get some sort of um, clothing, whether that be like a 1940s hat or mm. something like that. You'll get a, um, a QR code that you'll that you'll pick up on your phone, and then that will then launch a very stylized 1940s film, which tells you how mm. to make a cocktail and has suitable electro swing music. This, mm-hmm. this is for our 1940s brand. And that'll be delivered through your post box with, within one to two days. So that's been a great success. Um, and it's growing week on week. I mean, it's still, it's still so much smaller than we'd even make in, yeah. in a week at one of the venues. It's more akin to what you might make on a weekend at the moment mm. um, in one venue. But it's, it's great for branding. It's great for having communication while everybody's stuck at home. And we're launching more stuff around sort of... Uh, at home pizza kits. Mm-hmm. We partnered with Deliveroo to do some delivered Negronis with another brand. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the pleasing stuff that we're not standing still and we're doing stuff we probably should have done before. Yeah. 